Hi everyone, uh, thank you for watching uh, Brush Sauce Theater Episode 3, and uh, I just wanted to clarify what will be in this one. Um, I'm going to cover basic uh, fo uh, perspective techniques in uh, Photoshop here. And so, so that means is I'm not going to be giving any kind of lecture or lesson on perspective and principles of it itself, but more how you can make grids and set up scenes within Photoshop. Alright, I'd also like to mention at this point, this episode will be a collaboration between me and my friend uh, Matt Laskowski. He will be doing the whole second part of the video, so you'll see it switch over, but he'll, he'll be demonstrating a more technical approach to uh, using a perspective grid in Photoshop. Alright, so here we'll begin. Um, now, for the record, this is just my approach to doing it. I'm sure there's a lot of other ways and even better ones, but I get asked how I do it, so I'd like to show you. And first, um, what I like to do is I set up an horizon line. That's that red line at the top there. That's just with the line tool. Um, you know, you set a color and a width, and you just you, know, you pick a, a horizontal point across the page. That's going to be the horizon line. That comes first. And then the blue I made on a second layer, the, the blue lines, that's for one vanishing point. I just have a perspective brush I use to block that in, and I use that on these little little smaller thumbnail drawings. And then, as you can see, what I'm doing here, I, you know, you just take any kind of brush above that, and you can block out a scene really quickly. And that, you know, that kind of comes from knowing uh, perspective, you know, and practicing it a lot. But, you know, see, this is how I do it. I would take the line tool and just draw several of them across the screen. And then what you do is skew it, and you just make sure across the horizon at the top you got at least one of those blue lines that will go straight. That'll show you that I have, like, a vanishing point off the screen, and that's how I kind of get that accurately. And then, yeah, see, it's somewhere, so it's off the, off the page there. And then, you know, you pick another point anywhere on that red line, and you can draw another one, and then you have right there. And now you have two-point perspective, and you can begin, again, blocking out the scene, usually, like, on the layer above or below, and you just kind of sketch it in. And when you, you're following the, the perspective grid there, that's just kind of like, you know, all the buildings, you know, would be going to, to those two points. I mean, you can always go off that and, you know, have them go from a, you know, a third or a fourth vanishing point, but that's, that, that's when it gets a little busy. So here again, I, you know, I make a lower perspective uh, line, the horizon line there, the red one, and then I have another single point coming down there. And kind of, you know, where you pick the horizon line, that's going to dictate how you know, the, the angle, the, the shot of the, the design itself. And so you got to kind of think about that uh, when you're designing a scene. And this is going to show you, you can have the horizon line and the vanishing points, you know, completely off the picture plane. See, I'm making those in the second box, but the image I'm going to draw is actually in the one above. So, you know, it doesn't always have to be right in shot. And when you do this type of um, angle or shot design, that, that's kind of more for like a, a real... Um, an angular or a sharp one, something a little more dramatic that'll kind of emphasize one direction or the other more than it normally does. And see, this is like, you know, you're way on the ground looking up at a, you know, a giant city. So the if you're looking up at something, the horizon line has to be low. If you're looking down in a, a scene, the, the horizon line would be higher. And I'll show that here. So you just take the same points and using the scene below, you start sketching out blocking out a scene here and yeah see it's like looking down into a scene like you're up on the ceiling or on a little balcony you know you just I don't know what I'm doing just bullshitting some stairs and you know put little trees and a couple walkways like it's in a, up in a palace or something but you know th this isn't giving it any thought at all I mean these took like you know 45 seconds to do it it's really sloppy but this is how all my drawings begin I will make it look this awful at first you know I even send it to the clients at this level sometime just to see if the angle's right because I don't want to dedicate a lot of time if they're just going to choose a whole different angle altogether so you know once stuff like, like that more or less that level is approved the thumbnails then you know I will drop the opacity and go up and clean it up and then paint it but yeah it, this it's really simple how I do it the, Matt will show you at the end of this video a much more kind of technical approach but it, it has its advantages as well and see I'm just getting that you know the blue lines at the top to run horizontally or, you know, it'll lie perfectly with that horizon line I set. Because when you don't have that at that level, then it, and it'll it'll start looking a little bit wonky. And then so you can even duplicate the perspective grid that you just make for one side, and it can work for um, both of them, too. 
there's a lot of shortcuts to doing this and yeah you see I'm starting to block out the the, the city scene uh, it's gonna be like you know this underground like uh, not like in a cavern but it may be like it'll be like an under underground sector or something and you got these giant ma massive pillars with all the like the people build houses up onto them and stuff and and you gotta think you know big shapes to the small shapes don't think detail at this stage and see I just that that showed it all right there at, the, at this level even kind of my um, vision for it it just you, you gotta start at a much simple level block out the the scene will start reading itself and the details will fill in kind of they'll, they'll start they'll come on their own you like you won't have to think as much about them if you just work out the big shapes first and it's gonna be the big shapes that define the scene as a whole so yeah I'll show a couple different perspective shots on this one and it starts you know kind of this big messy and loose and you see right in the second one I have all the um the shapes defined just not none, none of the details are there I'll, I'll, I'll start work on the details next but then you know I'm just kind of messing with you know you use the, the one two three rule which is you know did the background the foreground and the midground on these and every every one of these scenes has it it's just to a different uh, degree so sometimes I like to throw in a, a um, close foreground item like this little ship here just to push you know the to sell the the distance and the the atmosphere perspective in it a bit more and so this is like you know time lapsed up a bit and I'm cleaning it up and yet adding you know just little details in the scene and these are probably like the least important thing but so I don't like to show a lot of that because it's just it gets you know really redundant this is just using like a basic little line tool and I, I usually don't even draw my scenes out like this I, I'm kind of doing this just for fun you know just for this video here and yeah just kind of just messing around with drawing sometimes you need to just draw right in the sketchbook if you're really good at you know perspective and you can bullshit it good and I do bullshit perspective a lot I'm really <laughs> that's what I do I, don't, I mean it, when it has to be technically correct I will make it correct but a lot of the times especially if it's just for my stuff I just kind of wing it yeah I think it gives it a little bit of character you just draw little manholes. I don't know. You could just, you know, you could up res this even and take all the detail to another level. But I don't know. That's not really the important thing. But see, like, I, when you start at a stare at a blank page, it's a lot harder to kind of compose a screen, um, a scene. So I, you know, start with the big shapes, and then you know you start detailing in those big shapes, and you know you get smaller and smaller as you go and then the, you know the detail will kind of come so it's, it helps to study a lot of like industrial type environments too when doing you know this type of scene in particular or whatever scene you're doing you should always research and reference to kind of you know get a stronger understanding I'm not really shading anything at this point maybe just suggest a couple of the textures you know I have no plans either at this point to even take these three scenes uh, further than this. But maybe if if there's something you guys want to see in a future video, or or see me take one of these scenes further, like you know, let me know. You know, leave a comment uh, below or, or hit me up on Facebook, whatever. And you know, maybe when I have time, I can work a video lesson into taking one of these scenes further or something. But uh, a majority of these videos do come directly from my client work because that's all I have time for lately I just at the at the end of the day of after working for like you know eight ten hours I'm just too burnt out to make anything of my own lately Ugh. so yeah the, the, the top two scenes are I have a high horizon line the, the second one being completely out of the shot itself and then the bottom one I, I, I went with the lower one just to kind of you know I, I don't know in my head I'm just thinking this is a cool little RPG town type of thing you know you like you can make it into a game scene and you know, have the little characters walk around I don't know just, just making up as I go and then you know at the end of it you can kind of show a couple of the planes the you know the by putting just a little bit of value in. This isn't shading it or even planning the lighting out. This is kind of just separating um, the different planes. Like, see, the, so, you know, the darkest thing will be 
um, the closest to you and the lightest will be further and it just helps the image read a bit so you help that edge right there push the distance in the background and that's all that is and so now I'm gonna leave this over to, to Matt and he will um, he'll show you a different way of setting up some perspective so uh, thank you for viewing everybody Hello everyone, my name's Matt, also known as Fox Orion in certain parts of the internet. I'm going to be showing you today how to make uh, perspective grids in Photoshop, as well as how to recall them to use in later files, uh, later scenes that you might be drawing. I'm using Photoshop CS6 here, which should be the same, uh, this shouldn't really change compared to previous versions, not really. Um, and my canvas is at 100% zoom, which is a little bit important since I'm going to be using the arrow keys to nudge certain elements. Uh, and if we're at 100% zoom, that keeps them at a consistent nudge distance. So to begin, we're gonna go to the pen tool, which is right here, or you can hit P on your keyboard. Uh, and I'm going to hold shift while making a vertical line just like this. Here we are. So that is a vertical line. Of course, when you hold shift, that constrains the line to a 45 degree angle. So we have a, a vertical line there. I'm going to hold the, I'm going to click and hold on the uh, pen tool here, and I'm going to select in the sub menu the convert point tool. And with this, I'm going to highlight the entire line so that both endpoints are black. And I'm going to go to copy and paste. The line pastes perfectly over itself so we can't see it, but it is there. If I were to nudge it to the side with the arrow tool, you'll see that it moves over. So there are two lines now. I'm going to undo that. And uh, to create a consistent distance between all of these lines, I'm going to hold shift and hit the right arrow key four times. One, two, three, four. There we go. And now I'm going to join together this bottom edge. Now the reason why I'm joining this bottom edge together is because Photoshop cannot free transform any line that has no 2D data. Currently this line is only horizontal. It contains only horizontal data. And because of that, if I were to highlight this line and if I attempted to free transform it, it's going to tell me that it can't because it encloses no pixels. If I were to add some vertical element to this so that this line now has both width data and height data, if I were to highlight this line again and free transform it, suddenly I can. I can rotate it, stretch it, I can use distort on it, and this is the basis of what we're, what we're going to be doing with this grid. So if I were to accept that scene now, it's a completely different shape. I'm going to delete that for now though, and focus back on our little tall U shape here. By joining together these two lines, this line is now one cohesive line, uh, So which means this path now has vertical and horizontal data. So I'm going to select this entire line again, all the way around, I'm going to copy and paste it, and holding shift, I'm going to nudge it over an equal number of times so that it has a gap equal, so now we have three gaps here. I'm going to highlight the whole thing again and just repeat this process a couple of times, copy, paste, nudge it over until we get a decent number of vertical lines, so I would say this is enough times right here. Now we're going to be copying and pasting this entire thing and then rotating it 90 degrees over itself. So we want to make sure that it's, it's a bit square. So I'm just going to highlight this top edge of points and just nudge them up so that they stretch to become somewhat square. That's close enough. Now, I'm going to highlight this entire thing, copy paste it one more time, and I'm going to go to free transform. Of course, free transform right here, under, under edit, 
or right click free transform path. And I'm going to go to rotate 90 degrees. There we go. What we, what we need to make sure of is that the grid is perfectly overlapping the other one. So we're going to drag this so that it's perfectly over that side and perfectly meets up with these. So there's no overlap, it's perfect. I'm going to alt, then pan down to the bottom opposite edge and I'm going to stretch by dragging this corner point, this grid so that it perfectly lines up and overlaps the other side. So now this grid is pretty much flawless. There's no line sticking out of the edges. It's pretty much perfect. I'm gonna zoom back out here so we can see the whole thing. There's two more steps we gotta do. We're gonna highlight the entire thing now. And I didn't mention this at the beginning, but right here on this button, if you have the pen tool selected, there's this button right here, and it uh, allows you to change the way that these overlapping lines interact with each other. Uh, right here, exclude overlapping shapes is the one that we need to be on. If you started creating this grid and you were on the default, which is combined shapes, uh, the grid's not going to work when we try to save it. However, um, uh, we can convert it right now. So if you're on the convert point tool and you do have the entire grid selected like this, go back to the pen tool, click on this button, and convert it to exclude overlapping shapes. This is important. After you have that, you, we're also going to do this additional action which is merge shape components. This is also important. This is the only way that the, the shape will save so that we can recall it later in a future file. So merge shape components, there we go. And now we're going to right click or go to the edit window and go to define custom shape. You'll see that's also listed right here. Oh, that's also listed right here define custom shape. So we're going to select that. And it looks a bit something like this, uh, but it's it's not going to be a checkerboard when we bring it back later. So I'm just going to name this grid. There we go. Now I'm actually going to, just for the sake of demonstration, delete this one so that I can show you how to bring it back. So it's gone. Right down here, beneath the pen tool, right here, Normally this, this is your rectangle, your rounded, you know, ellipse, polygon, the line tool, which Tyler uses, and then we have the custom shape tool. If you have this tool selected, right up here, you can select your custom shapes. I've made a few perspective grids already in practice, but uh, here is the one I just made right here. It's called grid right there. I'm going to select that and just simply drag one out. There's, there we go. There's a grid. Oops, and here's another one. And here's another one. You can make as many as you want. You, you basically only have to create the grid once and then it's made. We can keep bringing it back every time after that. So I'm going to create a grid right there like that. And now we can edit this to any perspective we want. By going back to the convert point tool, we can highlight the entire thing Go to free transform and distort. Perspective or distort. Distort gives you a little bit more freedom. Of course, when we choose pers perspective, it automatically moves both sides, both opposite ends. So you get sort of this. Let me undo that. Go to, if we, cho if we choose distort instead, we get to move each corner individually. You get a little bit more freedom in terms of exactly how you want this perspective to appear. So right now I'm creating a grid that has a pretty noticeable perspective to it. You can go ahead and draw underneath it. You know, you can use this as a, a more or less a perspective ruler to make sure that all of the lines you're making are uh, following the, cr the correct angle. Uh, if you wanted, uh, if you want to, let's say, place this grid underneath your drawing, 
uh, so that you're drawing or painting on top of it, um, and I just accidentally zoomed in, there we go, you can make it become permanent as pixels on a layer. We can do that by, uh, first off, going to your brush tool and making sure that the that your settings are not crazy. Like, make, um, uh, choose like a one or two pixel round brush. That's pretty normal. Uh, create a new layer, a new blank layer right here. And then when you have the work path selected of your grid, um, basically just this, right click it, go to stroke path, and make sure that the tool that it will be stroked with is brush. Hit OK, and now there we go. It is now a permanent grid. This is pixels. I can draw over this, draw or paint over this um, if I wanted to, uh, or I can dim it, dim it down in opacity so that it's uh, not as obvious against whatever it is you're drawing. Uh, and you can just keep, you can keep adding to it if you want to. You can uh, bring in a new, uh, a new grid. Um, and, and, and really stretch these things out if you want to. If we zoom out, uh, you can take distort, you can, uh, you can really, really get some, oop, dragging the entire edge there. You get, you, you get some pretty out, outlandish stuff. Uh, things that maybe your brain might have a hard time <laughs> understanding without the aid of, uh, all this math going on visually. Uh, there we go. Yeah, you can have something like that. Not that that makes a lot of sense <laughs> in reality, but uh, you get what I'm going for here. So that's pretty much the gist of it. So uh, I'm going to hand this back to Tyler. All right, so that will conclude uh, this episode. Uh, yeah, I know the format changed a bit, but it, uh, yeah, I think it was in the best interest of the, the subject matter we had to show. I hope you were able to learn and take something from this one. Uh, so send any questions over to, to Matt or I, and uh, thank you for watching and subscribing, and take care. Mm -hmm.